earlier on, we said that scaffolding begins with knowing what the student can do on their own and then assisting them with the parts of the task they can only do with your guidance. We have already looked at what the student can do on their own in Module 1, so next I want to show you three steps to assist students with the parts of the task they can only do with your guidance. Step 1 is to use the success criteria to identify what the student needs to do. Step 2 is to break the success criteria into mini steps and step 3 is to assist the student to master one step at a time before you move on to the next step. Let's look at these one at a time. As you will recall from Module 1, success criteria describe what students need to do to successfully achieve the learning intention. So step one is to use the success criteria to identify what students need to do. You won't always have a list of success criteria to refer to in every support lesson and may sometimes need to work them out beforehand or better still with the student. Let's look at an example. The students are learning how to log into a school computer. What would be three success criteria they need to achieve to be successful? The student must be able to turn on the computer enter their username and enter their password. You can now use these criteria to observe what the student can do on their own and where they need help. Step 2 is to break the success criteria into mini steps. If a student is having difficulty logging in, you may need to break the task down further. For example, if the student can't enter their username, you could break their criteria into these three mini steps. Do they know their username? Can they type their username correctly? Can they place the at in the correct place if the username is their email address? The mini steps will help you work out which parts of the task the student needs help with. Step three is to assist the student to master one step at a time. So you need to check that the student understands what to do before moving on to the next step. This is especially important when tasks are in sequence, such as maths operations, science procedures, and many writing tasks. Now it's your turn. Go to activity five in your workbook and use the success criteria given to break the task into mini steps.